Hey everybody, how you doing? N2 Weapons back again with you. Got a new rifle to share with you. Thought I would do a quick unboxing and overview video for you before I get it out to the range tomorrow and do some shooting with it. But uh, found this new rifle locally and what we're going to look at here is a TGI SA2000M AMD 65 variant. Uh, as you can see, made in Hungary by the FEG group. I believe they come into the country as parts kits and TGI puts them together. Uh, or at least they did at this time. This is one of the older rifles from the original parts kits that came into the country. These um, uh, AMD 65 variants are a little bit more hard to come by. They're not as readily as available as a lot of other rifles. Uh, to get an original one here with an original barrel, and I'll show you that here shortly, you have to buy them on the private market at this point, and they run in price between $550 and $650. Uh, I noticed recently that Clearview Investments, which is also Centerfire Systems, also had a batch of these parts kits, and they were assemb assembling them with uh, a U.S.-made 16-inch barrel, and they were running on their website at $550. They may even still be available at this time. Uh, this one's a little bit more desired because it does have the original barrel on here that's uh, a little bit shorter than a 16-inch U.S. made one. So we'll go over that here shortly. But in the box here we have the AK Rifle Instruction Kit. Uh, we have a cleaning kit, which is pretty standard with a lot of stuff. I'm not going to open this up. It just actually looks like it's already open. Just a standard cleaning kit in there. Obviously this gun is a folder so it doesn't have the butt stock or anything to put that in there. Came with a couple oil bottles there, one orange and one which is kind of a yellow, I guess it's just more of an oil can I guess. Uh, came with a 20 round plastic magazine, looks like it's a Tapco. And uh, the reason that it came with a 20 round instead of a 30 round is not because of any kind of ammo restriction or anything like that, it's because of this forward grip on this guy. So we'll go ahead and take this box down here real quick, we'll set it aside and we'll go ahead and do a close up on this this AMD 65 here for you. Okay, so we'll take a little bit closer look at this AMD 65 or the SA2000M, whichever way you want to look at it. And the reason I'm calling it an SA2000M is because that is what it's been designated by TGA, uh, TGI, I should say. You can see that stamped on the bottom there. Uh, but otherwise, it is essentially an AMD 65 variant, as you can see here on the receiver. If I can get a picture of that there, made in Hungary. And uh, we have the FEG logo right there on the receiver as well, which is what most people look for when they get an AMD 65, is they want an original Hungarian FEG receiver. Uh, so that, that's one real key part here. The other uh, key part is the original barrel that you'll notice is generally much shorter than what you'll find on a regular AK. And that's because it came into the country. It's original chrome line barrel. And I'm sorry, the, the length uh, fails me here. I can't remember exactly what it is. But in order to meet the uh, requirements of the ATF, what they had to do was essentially uh, put on this two-piece brake. And they do also come in one-piece brakes. Uh, and it's essentially... Uh, welded in place on here so it becomes part of the barrel to make that uh, legal requirement of overall length with it. So uh, that's what we have on here. It's got that uh, well-known Hungarian AMD brake on there which a lot of people say makes a lot of noise. That's one of the reasons I've always been attracted to this particular variant. Never really found a decent deal on one. Was happy to come across this one, that's for sure. Uh, there is some to be desired on this rifle. Again, this is a two-piece brick. I wish it was a one-piece. Uh, that would certainly make it a little bit more desirable. Uh, this one was, again, fired. It wasn't, wasn't new in box, but as many of you know, I like to shoot my gun, so that wasn't a huge deal. Uh, and another thing to be desired on these rifles is the finish. The finish on AMD 65s, especially by TGI, are not well known. Uh, in fact, I can kind of show you down here. Maybe you'll see on the, the bottom of the mag well there. It's kind of chipping up and scratching. Uh, if, if I take the rails off here, maybe when I break down the rifle, I can show you along the rails in here. Uh, a lot of the paint is just chipping away. So the paint uh, uh, that they use on here really isn't the best. But uh, again, for a working gun, for a gun like this, that's not a huge deal. I, I notice a lot of people definitely... Uh, have the option of going back and, and refinishing these as well. I'm not an expert on these particular variants, guys. I don't. I, I didn't do a whole lot of research on it. Uh, but <clears throat> essentially, what we have again is uh, made in Hungary at the FEG by FEG, uh, built here in the country by TGI, um, 762 by 39. The matching serial numbers on here is the dust cover, the recoil spring, the bolt carrier, the bolt, and the gas tube, which is all nice. So it's all matching numbers, which is really cool. Uh, it does have a TAPCO G2 trigger, obviously it does have to meet the 922R compliance. There's a number of US made parts on here to do that. <clears throat> uh, like I mentioned, the horrible finish, it's not very durable, that's pretty well known for this variant. Um, <clears throat> the grips are pretty beat up, 
There is placement holes on the side here, which is kind of interesting if you'll notice. Uh, the two little stamped dimples there and there and there. Those are actually placement holes for a side rail scope mount, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I don't have any other AKs in my collection that have those dimples on their receiver, so that's kind of nice. I don't think I'll end up putting a um, side rail scope mount down here. Um, <clears throat> the Magwell cut looks clean when it comes into the country. I believe it is a single stack uh, version, and uh, they have to change that out as well as the bolt and everything. But TGI did a pretty decent job on here. As far as internet criticisms, I guess there are some uh, variants out there that they didn't build very well. It seems like mine is built halfway decent. I haven't fired it yet, so I'm hoping for the best. The action seems well. There isn't anything real loose or uh, you know popping out at me is going to be a problem. But uh, they are, they do have some problems out there with some of the previous builds. So that's something you have to be wary of if you are in the market for one. Uh, the the fit is very good. There is some rattling here, and I'll see if I can. Did you do that? And I actually think that's the bolt there. As you can see it's got a little bit of wiggle, but it does lock up nice. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but obviously there is some slight fit issues there. Uh, the action is pretty smooth. It doesn't hang up on the hammer at all, which is surprising for a Taco G2 trigger. And uh, the trigger is pretty decent as well, and that's, you know, pretty consistent with a, a Taco trigger there. They're pretty well, so. Uh, Got a pretty good take up there. The reset. It's pretty clear. Um, overall, pretty pretty happy with the trigger. I'm actually kind of surprised for a tackle how well it runs in this gun. Uh, the rear sight is graduated to 800 meters. The front sight, you know, I'll actually show you here. Got a battle sight there, and then you got, uh, like I said, graduated out to 800 meters. Pretty standard. And then the front sight is uh, canted a little bit, if I remember correctly. I was just a Slight can to the left. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to pick this up on the camera, but not a huge deal. Like I said, some of those quality issues are pretty well known for this variant built by TGI. Um, it does have the chrome line barrel. It does have the side folder with the rubber butt pad on here. The side folder is operated by this little button down here on the back of the receiver and essentially just push that in and that should release the uh, folder here up and over. It is a little bit tight like most folders are out of the box, so there you go. Pretty comfortable actually. Most people find that the AMDs are, uh, for a folder, one of the more comfortable variants out there. A lot of people will get the, uh, the little thing that rides right here for your cheek rest. I probably will add, end up adding one as well and wrapping it with some paracord. So uh, that's one thing I'm looking forward to doing to this rifle. Um, and that's pretty much it guys for the overview. I'll just go ahead and run it past you. You can kind of kind of see the full effect here if I can get it to focus in on the rifle. But overall, a really good looking rifle. It's got a cleaning rod there. Got the uh, pretty characteristic missing handguard on the top there, the gas tube cover. I think that's one of the things that, or the features that stand out on these AMD 65s, as well as the, the vertical foregrip on there. Everything else there. The fit and finish, or the finish looks good right now. I have a feeling though when I clean it, it's definitely going to change probably going to wear off or chip off would be my assumption. And there's the other side. Got a uh, sling mount there as you can see. Right there. We'll go ahead and break it down real quick for you. And the dust cover I'm not really going to point out to you except for, you know, it's got the, the serial number on the back there. Again, I don't know if that's going to focus in on it. <coughs> uh, recoil spring comes right out. Nothing that, uh, uh, unusual about that, pretty standard. Again, it's got a matching number on there, which is kind of nice. Uh, fire control group, I guess I can show you real quick here as well. Again, just being a TAPCO G2, there isn't anything special there, but you can see it's been you know, run over a couple times, so definitely some wear, some wear usage there. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to make out here on the back, but you can see where the paint has worn away here pretty quickly. And again, being only fired probably less than 50 times, that's quite a significant amount of wear on that. Um, I just, you know, pretty much chalk that up to the poor finish on this gun. Take the uh, bolt carrier out and bolt. And uh, again, matching serial number on that, if I can get you to pick that up there. Otherwise the uh, carrier and the piston show a little bit of sign of wearage there, you can see. They didn't clean it obviously after they shot it. That wouldn't be in my collection. I have to go ahead and clean this guy up real good when I'm done shooting it. Uh, but the bolt face is uh, 
fairly clean. So you can see there that again, probably less than 100 rounds so it would be my estimate on it. Very, very minimal usage on it. Uh, but the, uh, does, the uh, bolt here does have a number stamped right there. And the bolt carrier, again, I think I showed you that, stamped right there. And uh, we also have the chrome line barrel. I don't know how much of a view you guys are going to have of that. I don't know if the light's going to pick it up or not. But uh, fairly clean. Yeah, I don't think I can get the light to work on that. Uh, but fairly clean barrel. Uh, there isn't any wearage or scratches or anything on the barrel, so it looks pretty good. And then we have the front gas tube, which, again, I think I was numbered on this. Yeah, 6291 right there. So pretty nice to have a matching parts kit, you know, come through when you buy a rifle like this. That certainly increases the value. <clears throat> One thing I did want to mention is a lot of people think that you can't put 30-round magazines, like I mentioned, the 20-round magazine came with it. <clears throat> they say you can't use it because of this vertical foregrip. That's actually not the case. So you can see the 20 round obviously works fine, but if I use a uh, Bakelite 30 round, a lot of people say, ah, oh, you can't get it in, it doesn't work, you can't rock it in, but, um, and this goes back to Urban Tiger, he actually showed a trick on this, but if you just kind of go up with it and in, it works just fine. So these do accept 30 round magazines just fine. Uh, what I did notice is because it was cut um, from a single stack, the mag while opening here is a little bit loose. So here's a, a Polish steel 30 rounder here. Put it up in there and you'll notice quite a bit of mag wobble there and that's again just because of the the conversion process but it locks up tight i'm not expecting to have any problems when i take it to the range to do some shooting we'll definitely uh test it with a few different magazines though that's pretty much it guys like i said i'm hoping to bring it to the range tomorrow and do some shooting with it so we'll, we'll go ahead and test fire it and see how it runs but otherwise i appreciate you watching if you have any questions let me know otherwise uh, until next time take her easy